Hi, Carrie Birchall here with North Star Coaching. I want to offer you three tips today that is going to change your world. Now, these three tips come up with uh, come from some clients that I have that are really hitting the wall, and I know they're not alone, and I've been there. So I wanted to share three strategies with you that helped me get through that space. And sometimes when you're hitting the wall, you kind of have to go into that dark cave and, and figure some things out. And that is definitely what I did a couple of years ago, but I couldn't have done it without some strategies to sort of see through the fog, see through the dark cloud, the rainstorm, whatever weather analogy you want to have. So today is addressing three things to manage your care too much. Your give a crap factor, I call it. Because when we care too much, that's when things start to feel like oppressive and heavy and it doesn't matter what you do it's not going to affect the change you want and all of that comes from bless your heart a southern illinois saying which doesn't really mean bless your heart caring too much so bless your heart like stop doing that uh, ironically i want you to care about your work it's just when you care too much then you're going to burn yourself out so please bless your heart Stop caring too much. Here's how, here's how you can kind of figure out how to reduce that care too much and get in your lane of what you can control, what you can maybe influence, and whew, let the rest of the stuff go so that your caring doesn't bog you down, mire you down in negativity, have you show up in a way that's not really you. So if you resonate with any of those realities, stay tuned for the next couple of minutes. Strategy number one, this was a game changer for me. Pretend that you are a contractor in your current job and you're going to be there to help for three months. Now, it doesn't matter how far you get in the project you're working. It doesn't matter how much advancement you can help them working. You're just there to do your best and work what you can work in three months. Because, whew, oh, thank goodness, at the end of three months, you can relax. You've done the best you can given the environment that you went to help out with for, you said it, three months. So sit with that for a second. What would it feel like to you if you played this silly game in your head that you only had to work three more months? I can tell you for me, when my coach recommended that, when I was in not a great place, in, a, in an organization that I was helping because I cared too much. I wanted to affect all of this change and my best intentions were not having the whole scale impact that I wanted. Hello, because I was trying to control too much. I was trying to splash too big in a kiddie pool pond. Um, when I felt that three month finish line, oh, like in that instant when the coach said, what would it be like if you only worked three months? I like physically felt a lift. So sit with that and see if you can get yourself in that headspace of a three month milestone and whew, you're out. Strategy number one. Now I will admit with a couple of my very close trusted friends in this time in my professional career, not too long ago, I let them know that I was only going to be there three months in my head, right? And they could play along with me and, hey, how's it going? What are you at now? Like two and a half months? And I said, oh, no, it's, it's always a three-month looking out thing. Like I wasn't three months, then two months, then one month, two weeks out. I, I just always kept this three-month finish line in front of me. And as I went along, the three months also went along with me. And so, you know, I could kind of say to people, oh, no, I'm, I'm still at three months, just started my three months. And it was my way to sort of uh, keep myself engaged because you want to you wanna unattach from the big work. So that's, you know, a strategy to kind of manage your give a crap factor. So the three month strategy is about helping you unattach versus divorcing. You don't want to divorce, right? Because that's, that's when you've really like held your hands up and given in. So you want to you wanna find a way to unattach you know, your, your identity and your success and your happiness with the work you're doing isn't based on the outcome you want to unattach so that you're really invested in the work, not in what the work does. 
Now that's a, that's a tricky thing. I could probably do a whole other session on that. Maybe I will next week. Um, but you want to get to this healthy, unattached place where you know that you're doing your best in the three months. You have this short window. You're giving it your all and you're not frustrated already about what's going to happen or not happen, which is going to obviously affect how you show up at work and really do your job. Because I can tell you when I had this dark cloud over me, I can guarantee you I was not being my best uh, leader, employee, influencer, all of that stuff. So pretend you're there for three months. Strategy number one. Those friends that I shared that with brings me to strategy number two, which is get an accountability partner. For me, it was my coach. It was a couple, not many, of really trusted colleagues that could kind of play this game with me on the three-month thing. They were also my accountability partner for me to manage that negative space that is not me. You know, I wasn't happy with that cloud over me. I had to go into the dark cave and figure out, what the heck, Carrie? Like, what's going on here? And my accountability partners checked in on me, and I had to report back to them how I was doing. That could be a friendly conversation over lunch. It could be, you know, a walk during a break at work. It could be a beer after work. Whatever way makes sense for you. I formalized it with a coach. Uh, and I also had these friends that on a day-to-day -day basis were, were there kind of checking in on me. And, and they were my sounding boards, my accountability partners. They didn't let me vent and rant and be negative and complain. That is not a good accountability partner. They were there helping me... Uh, do the work that I wanted to do, which was get out from under that, that cloud. Ah, that is not me. Okay. So first strategy is the three month trick. Second is the accountability partner. And the third one is get really um, clear with yourself on some boundaries around the hours that you're willing to work. So when I sort of entered this uh, not so great space of wanting to control too much stuff. And I did that because I saw I saw what needed to be done. I saw the hurt of things not happening. I was working in a leadership space, organizational support. I, I could just see the domino effect of what was not happening and the impact it had on the people that I was serving. And so I really wanted people, places, things in place so that this domino started stopped happening and it just killed me. I could have spent 24 hours a day at work and I was not the end all be all catch all of making all those changes. I mean, you might even be the president of your company. You don't have the power to make all those changes, right? And that's the manage the give a crap factor, right? Is recognizing I can't affect all of the change I want. I mean, even if I could do it all, which nobody has enough time to do it all, even if I could do it all, it's not gonna have the impact you want, right? And that's where the power of collaboration and teamwork and all those good things come together, different, different live streaming. So you got to manage your hours and have really clear boundaries with yourself around your work. So I started looking for things around that accountability. So we have a dog. I had to be home in time to get the dog a really good walk before dark. Lived in an area that was a bit rural, not a lot of street lights, that kind of thing. Plus I didn't want her to get skunked. And you know, I, I had this rationale going on in my head. Eh? Like I wanted her to be able to chase deer in the, in the, in the evening light. That's super fun for her, right? I did not want her to get skunked in the dark, which meant she had to be on a leash and she couldn't have her dog fun. Like, so I had this rationale on when I needed to leave work in the evenings because I wanted to walk the dog. I also, at one point, um, played around with joining a Zumba class. Now, <laughs> I do not dance well. And so Zumba was fun, but not really a long-term thing for me because there were times in the class when I would like stop. Everyone else is doing like their cool, coordinated thing and I was just laughing at what I saw in the mirror because I was looking like a I don't know um, a hippopotamus on its back trying to flip itself over not coordinated so I did that once it was a six-week course it was good though because it was two times a week and I had to leave work for the class and I told people transparently you know if I can't take care of myself then I'm not doing anything to model that kind of healthy work-life balance for other people. My boss was fantastic saying like, good for you, you're right. So I would say to people in meetings like, I've got to leave in 45 minutes, not an hour meeting, 45 minutes, because I've got a Zumba class I've got to go to. And everyone's like, oh, that's so cool. And then I tell them about how I look like a hippopotamus on my back trying to get up. It was a nice icebreaker and it modeled a uh, healthy work-life balance. But really the Zumba class was about me managing my give a crap factor, right? I gave other people the story of healthy, healthy work-life balance, 
um, you know, modeling, all that kind of stuff, right? So a couple of wins out of that, really. But the bottom line was strategy number three was really about me managing that give a crap factor with very clear boundaries. So in wrap up, we all wish we could have more influence than we do. It would be lovely if we could control the universe around us, which we can't. Those factors make us want to care more and try harder, which is a recipe for burnout. So if you implement these three strategies or one of them, first of all, pretending you're a three month contractor, second, the accountability partner, and third, drawing some very clear concrete boundaries around your hours at work. If you can implement those strategies so that you can manage your give a crap factor, you will show up for work better, more positive. That dark cloud is going to be lifted. People are going to want to work with you, collaborate. They want to be around your sunshine. Nobody wants to be around the person with the dark cloud. So be that person that people migrate towards because they want to partner with you. They want to collaborate with you. They want to do the work with you. And what happens when you have people in that kind of synergy? More gets done. And that brings us closer to wishing that we could influence more, control more, kind of shift more. You can't do it on your own, but you can do it with other people. And other people are going to want to work with you when you're in a good space showing up well. And that comes when you manage your give a crap factor. So I'd love to be an accountability partner for you, a coach. Let's connect. I mean, at the very least, I'd love to hear where you kind of go down some of those tunnels of the not great places that make you lose control of your give a crap factor and you kind of care too much because that's the the slippery slope that us as leaders can really um, slide down and it's not a good place and it's not a an easy place to come back from so i'd love to partner with you and just help you really be your best and shine like a north star i'm carrie burchill check out uh, my my facebook linkedin website carrieburchill.com bye